Hello, beautiful soul family. Rebecca here, your vibe mentor. Let's talk today about raising your vibration, possibly instantly or even permanently. I have some good news for you. There are some really well-known common things that we can do to raise our vibration, but there is a missing piece, a key that not many talk about. And so I want to cover that with you today. And it makes maintaining and holding your vibration high even easier and more long lasting. We all know we have to raise our vibration to manifest and create the life we love, not to mention just to feel good and enjoy life. So I'll offer you today a new and easy and proven technique that will help you get at those blocks that live within you and remove them from you so that you no longer have to dive back into those lower vibrations. We can live in the higher realms and manifest the life of our dreams. So let's dive right in. If you're anything like me, you had that aha moment moment of we are creators and our thoughts create our reality and all we have to do is maintain a high vibration to be able to create the life that we desire and yet if you're anything like me you also had that moment of oh crap (laughs) i don't think positively all the time in fact i primarily thought negatively when i first discovered this information and it created a lot of anxiety and angst within me because i wanted to create my dreams and yet controlling our thoughts and our feelings and our emotions can be very very difficult it's not an easy task at that stage of my life i was a single mother working a full-time corporate job, taking care of everything, trying to just keep everything under control, not to mention date and have a life on top of being a single mother. And now to discover that I also needed to manage every single thought was a daunting task. And sometimes when something seems so big and so impossible, we just want to give up. We don't even want to try. So that's why I'm here for you today. I want to let you know it can be easy. This does not have to be difficult. And so here we go. Let's jump right in. Step one, obviously, notice your frequency, notice your vibration. We have to understand the scale of consciousness or the scale of vibration to be able to understand where am I at on this scale. And the first step is to really just get in tune with and start to pay attention to and monitor where am I at on this scale? And we're constantly oscillating and that's okay. We don't have to always stay high vibe. In fact, we don't want to run away from those lower frequencies and vibrations. They are messengers and they are signals to help us understand what needs to be addressed within us so that we can then go back on about our way and get back into those high vibrations. So let's start by noticing the scale of consciousness, which I have here on the screen for you. The top or peak is enlightenment, which that can seem pretty difficult to understand until we get closer to it. But notice peace and joy and love. Those are our targets, right? Those are our goals. But also notice notice how often do you spend time in shame or guilt or apathy or grief or fear or desire, heaven forbid, anger or pride. Some of these emotions have been labeled as very, very bad or negative, but I want to let you know all emotions are good. Again, they are just signals and signposts to help you understand where you're at and where we're trying to go. Then of course, as we get a little bit higher, we're into courage, neutrality, willingness, acceptance. These are places where we want to live. And I want to highlight acceptance. Between neutral and acceptance is a very easy place to sustain and to live. Once you master the art, you go through all of these steps, you understand what it takes to get back to those higher vibrations. They're all accessible and very easy to maintain, right? especially when I give you this tip. And then of course, reasoning, love, joy, peace, and enlightenment. Those are the, the highest vibrations and the places we want to live. And when we go through these steps, you'll understand how to do that. Step one is just practice noticing where you're at. And if you start to feel really good, you know you're in those higher vibrations. If you start to feel really low or kind of like crap, you know you're in those lower vibrations. It's also important to note that a high vibration means you are thinking a positive and true thought. A low vibration means you are thinking a negative false thought. And those are usually connected to beliefs as well. Also within this step is noticing other people's vibrations and not taking them personally. So how someone behaves is based on how they're feeling. If they're in a lower vibration, a lower frequency, a lower mood, then they're not going to behave properly. They're not going to be very nice. And it doesn't say anything about you. So we don't need to take personally the other person's vibration. We just can recognize, oh, they're a little lower on the scale right now and we're not a match. 
The beauty is we are electromagnetic beings. We have energy running through us at all times. We are creating frequencies and vibrations that emanate at least 20 feet out of our body, depending on how expanded we are. And a person who's in a lower frequency or vibration will have one type of wave. And another person who is in a higher vibration will have a different type of wave. And if those waves are not similar, they will clash. So that frequency and vibration that is emanating from you will also affect how that person responds to you and vice versa. But again, it's not personal. It doesn't mean there's something wrong with you or you've looked at them the wrong way. It's just your energy is not a match. And step two, the first part of our trick is understanding the nervous system and your triggers. When something upsets you or triggers you, it puts you in an activated nervous system state, which usually is associated with a lower vibration. An activated nervous system state is when we feel fight or flight or fawn or freeze. A trigger may be something like you had a, a bad experience with your father when you were young and he was wearing red shoes. And now as you're walking down the street, you see a person with red shoes. Your body and your subconscious brain, your nervous system get activated and say, red shoes equal danger. So that can create fear, that can create stress, that can create worry, that can create hypervigilance. There's a whole slew of trauma responses. You're going to have to check out my video on 21 trauma responses to get to know yours and which one you have a tendency to go towards. But the important point here is getting to know your nervous system and starting to recognize when am I activated and when am I in a calm state. An activated nervous system state, again, is associated with lower frequencies and vibrations. It is also very masculine, blocking, resistant. So we will keep people out. We will keep miracles out. We will prevent ourselves from being able to receive. A rested nervous system state is very magnetic, very feminine, very open, allowing, able to receive. It is also associated with healing, rest, digest, growth, and repair. So all things that our body needs to be able to do. And for those of us who experience complex trauma, maybe a difficult childhood, a toxic relationship, or just the world today can be traumatizing, we often tend to live in our activated nervous system state. A trick here is freeze or an inability to be able to move or sometimes a lack of motivation, a lack of a desire to want to build your own business, but the inability to get yourself to do the things you know you need to do to create it. That is also associated with an activated nervous system state, even though we're very much in a calm, frozen, dorsal vagal state that is still considered activated. Again, masculine, blocking, resistant, lower frequency, lower vibration. Now, the challenge here is that the body keeps the score. The mind cannot resolve these challenges on its own. We have to go into the body, learn how to close that trauma loop because these unhealed wounds and stuck emotions that live in us are attraction points to keep drawing to us more of the same to help us see where we need to heal. And of course, the whole point of raising our vibration is so that we can create and manifest and draw beautiful, good things to us. So we want to be very aware of what's living in me by understanding my triggers and my nervous system so that I can heal and remove those things, which will then allow me to stay in that higher frequency and vibration and not get triggered by the red shoes walking by. Now, this is where the spiritual community gets a little stuck is we have a tendency towards toxic positivity. We want to always stay positive and ignore those lower frequencies and vibrations, but all emotions are good. They are signposts to help us see where we have an attraction point that is not desirable so that we can get rid of it. If we are pushing away lower frequencies and vibrations, emotions that seem undesirable, we're not addressing the root cause and healing and removing them from our body, we will continue to attract more of the same undesirable situation. And we are delaying what needs to be addressed. But the beauty is the body is designed to heal. God, creator, source, divine universe, however you want to say it, a rose by any other name, lives in your body. You could not be any closer to healing and support. We just need to learn how to work with the nervous system and heal and remove these blocks from us. I do offer free 30-minute sessions, so check out the link below. I offer something called trauma spotting through source tapping that will help you remove these traumas from your body so that you can stay in that higher vibration more consistently. Step three is understanding your mental environment. 
otherwise known as cognitive behavioral therapy in the psychology world. What do you say when you talk to yourself? Have you taken on the voice of your abuser? Sometimes we call it the inner critic. I like to call mine the trauma demon. The first step is just becoming the observer, the watcher of your thoughts. Get used to looking at your thoughts. Slow them down just enough that you can create enough space between the thought occurring and the label or the identification or the understanding of the type of thought that you have just had. Depending on who you ask, I've heard it said that we have 80,000 thoughts a day, 90% of them are repeated, and 70% are negative. That is a lot of negative thinking. That is a lot of lower vibration and frequency creation. They are repeated and consistently negative because we are not paying attention or watching them. So just start to notice them. And if you're very task oriented like me, you can start to write them down and put them into buckets based on the type of thought. Maybe it's thoughts around your job or thoughts around your money or thoughts around your relationship. And even within that, you can bucket them positive thoughts and negative thoughts. Below those thoughts are beliefs. Every thought stems from a belief. And so you can look, what is the belief that underlies this thought? If I have the belief that I am not being respected or I'm not being uh, rewarded properly in my work, then I can understand that I have a belief around corporate jobs not being good for me or people not being trustworthy or the world is a hard place or a difficult place or life is always difficult and hard for me or I always have to struggle. We really want to look for what is the underlying belief that that thought stems from and then be willing to change it. Choose a new opposite positive belief. Remember, we are creators from our frequency and vibration, but the way this works is it starts with your beliefs. From your beliefs come your thoughts. From your thoughts come the chemistry that is flooded in your body and that creates your frequency and your vibration. So we really want to get at the root cause those beliefs and those thoughts, and we can start to have a higher vibration more consistently. And many already know this, but I would be remiss to not mention it. You are not your thoughts. Your thoughts do not belong to you and they do not come from within you. We have discovered that thoughts are outside of us, that there's actually a sea of thoughts that are basically floating above our heads. And we draw them in again based on our current frequency and vibration. So one thought precedes another thought precedes another thought. I'm sure you've noticed sort of that rabbit hole effect when we start to go down the negative path. It's too easy to get all the way down to the bottom of the barrel. So if you find yourself down there and it is difficult to get back up, we want to just find a neutral thought. Notice neutral was in the middle there. We can get there pretty easily. Sometimes a saying like, well, it is what it is, right? Just pure acceptance. I can't change this. I just choose to accept that it is what it is. That's a neutral thought that'll get us back at least out of the bottom of the barrel and into a more manageable place. Also note too, it is very common for those of us who have unhealed trauma or experience complex trauma, traditional trauma, toxic relationships, the military, the world today, it is very common for the changes in the brain to cause us to look for negative bad things. In fact, that's just part of being human. It's part of what has allowed us to survive this long is to look for problems, but we're no longer running from tigers out in the desert anymore. We need to retrain our brain to start to look for the positive. And we can do that again through awareness, noticing our thoughts. What am I looking at? I love the tarot card, the five of cups, right? Are you looking at the spilled cups or are you looking at the full cups? And we can look at the full cups through things like gratitude, awe, appreciation. And again, as you heal the traumas, you relieve the body of those unhealed wounds and close those trauma loops, it'll be much easier to look at the full cups instead of the empty ones. Next, our physical state affects our emotional state. Remembering frequency and vibration are states of being directly connected to our emotions. For clarity, I often get the question, what's the difference between emotion and feeling? As I mentioned before, it starts with our beliefs, then our thoughts, then the chemistry that floods our body. The mind has to match in chemistry the thought or the image that we just fed it. So if I say that things are not safe or there is a threat out there, then the brain has flooded the body with stress hormones, cortisol and adrenaline. That will make you have an emotion of fear, anxiety, a desire to run or fight. That emotion, energy and motion is your frequency and your vibration. Now, a feeling is very different than an emotion. Once you have the emotion, the brain creates meaning and assigns a story to that emotion, and that is your feeling. That's why we don't listen to feelings, but we do honor emotion. Our physical state 
affects our emotional state, also affecting our frequency and vibration. So you can very quickly and easily shift your frequency and vibration by shifting your physical state. Go out and get some exercise. Remember, a stagnant body is going to feel depression, anxiety, and all sorts of discomfort. So move, get out in nature, go for a walk exercise, but don't punish yourself. Do something you love. Connect with nature. Take a forest bath. Did you know that the birds singing help open the plants for nutrients in the early mornings? It also helps us open to receive as well. Humans have an innate need for novelty. When we experience a new novel situation or environment, it creates motivation and excitement within us. We are not meant to be stagnant or stuck in one place. So go explore, find something new. In my sessions with clients, I'm always surprised every single session, every single person, when I ask them what they desire, they say travel. We are meant to move through life. Move your energy, move your body, move your frequency frequency and your vibration. Movement also helps us breathe. Breathing is an amazing way to raise your vibration. Let's remember the breath that moves through our body is the breath of life. That is divine prana moving through our bodies. So breath work can be amazing. If you have unhealed trauma, go for the soft and easy and calming breath work not the super heavy, right? Because that's going to activate your nervous system and cause fatigue. We want slow, deep breaths of safety. Breathe as you would if you were swinging in a hammock next to the sea. Showering, water, very cleansing can help you wash away all of that old negative vibration and call in new higher frequencies and vibrations. Sticking with the theme of the body, remember food is very, very important to a high frequency and vibration. You are what you eat. You are what you ingest in general, not just food. So go for high frequency, high vibration food. If you think about vegetables and fruits, they take in light to create the nutrients that feed our body. They also contain living water. You want to go for high vibrational, high density nutrient foods. And of course, that goes without saying that we need to reduce toxins, things like caffeine and alcohol can absolutely bring down your vibration. Processed foods kill the microbiome and 90% of serotonin is created in your gut. We absolutely want to nourish and feed the body so that we can create all of those happy hormones and all of those high vibrations and frequencies. And of course, let's not forget drinking water. Dehydration can cause depression and anxiety. If you feel grumpy, just go for a glass of water. That can be the simple and fastest way to raise your frequency and vibration. And again, things we ingest are not just food. Things like television and music absolutely contribute to our state of being. Remember, tell a vision is your television and you are watching a program. So you wanna program yourself for positivity and optimism optimism and belief in good things that are coming for you, belief in support, belief in love, belief in connection. When we watch television, we're in an alpha state of mind. We are programming our brain and telling ourselves how to think, which again affects frequency and vibration. It is also important to note here, it is very common in the spiritual community to struggle with screen addiction or doom scrolling or just consuming too much. We tend to be seekers and we are looking for something. We can't quite figure out what that is. I have come to know for me, it's a relationship with my creator and stepping into my purpose. But when we're in that seeking phase and we have that inquenchable thirst and we can't quite find the thing that we're seeking, we tend to go to YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. We're looking for ancient wisdom or more knowledge or the answers something that's going to fix this yearning, this angst within me, and yet come to find out it is also associated with a dorsal vagal state of your nervous system, a freeze response, and due to unhealed trauma. So again, make sure you utilize that free session to start learning how to work with your nervous system and remove unhealed wounds, trauma, and emotions from your body. And finally, within this category, friends know we are not consuming our friends, but we do take in their output. There is an exchange that is happening when we are engaging with people. And we wanna make sure that it's one, an equal exchange, and two, that they are sending positive energy to you because you are taking in and will have to cleanse yourself of any negativity that they send your way. They say that you are the sum of the five people you spend the most time with. So make sure you're choosing your friends wisely. And number five, creating a close, intimate, personal relationship with your creator. Sit in stillness. This is not just meditation. A guided meditation takes your thoughts down a certain path, and that can be good if you have an intention to create something. 
but complete and total stillness is where you will hear the divine speak. We often struggle with lower frequencies and vibrations because we believe it's all up to us or I'm on my own or there's no one out there for me or I've got to make this thing happen. We have a tendency to forget that God eternal within the body is written on the strands of every single DNA within you could not be any closer to healing, support, and the ultimate high vibration. You've heard the phrase, ask and you shall receive. It's not just things, it's wisdom, it's information. If you want to know what's blocking me from having a high vibration, ask the divine. Get intimately familiar with that voice. And again, doing the shadow work, doing the trauma healing is going to allow you to trust yourself to trust the divine. When we start cultivating that relationship, the guidance is going to become more clear. It's going to come more often. And we'll have that high vibration that leads to motivation and energy to be able to take the action and follow the guidance, no matter how uncommon, unusual, or illogical it may seem. We want to always be connected. A, B, C. Always be connected. And when you step into fully being source-led, life becomes magical. Life will get so good, it's almost impossible to be in those lower vibrations. And if for some reason you do end up there for a minute, it's a very small amount of time and you bounce right back very quickly. So if you've set the intention to have a high vibration, to step into your purpose and to live a source-led life, but you still struggle with those lower frequencies and vibrations, definitely reach out utilize the free session below. Otherwise, I do have a video for you on identifying whether or not you have complex trauma that can help answer that question for you as well. I love you, my friends, and I will see you on the next one. Namaste.